succeed in, if we will succeed in uh, war uh, conflict here and uh, and put the uh, Russian uh, army in even in one side, so we will have possibility to set up electricity in the city. Uh, we'll uh, continue uh, to restore all other utilities. So without uh, war succeed, I think several days. Are you able to tell us at all how many people have been killed and injured in the city? Do you, do you know? The uh, answer will be we don't know. Okay. Because we cannot collect all the bodies and counts. I know that more than 200 uh, are victims of this war, but uh, the um, honor answer, answer will be we don't know. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean civil citizens. I mean civil citizens. It's not war. It's not uh, military uh, question. I mean, not civil citizens. Okay, all that's definitely now with Mariupol in southeast Ukraine. We'll travel about 400 kilometers west of there and come to Kherson, a city at the mouth of the river Dnieper, where it meets the Black Sea. When we heard from there yesterday, the situation wasn't clear. There were Russian troops on the streets, we were told, but the Ukrainian authorities still seem to be working. Well, now it looks as if Hevson has fallen to the Russians, the first big city to do so. I've been talking to a journalist there, with the help of the translator, and we're not using her name for her name. The administration of the city is taken. However, it's a strange symbiosis of Russia and the Ukrainian power. There is a Ukrainian flag over the city. The mayor of the city is here, and he is organizing the lives of the city residents. The shops are open today. People are out in the streets, and there are long queues for the shops. In some places, there are given out free food. Bread, all the basic foods are available. However, there are some unwritten rules. There is a curfew. There are instructions only to move in seats in one and two if you are on foot and to dress slowly in cars. Oh, what's up? How are people interacting with the Russian troops when they meet them on the street? The Russian troops are scared of us. They see that they haven't been greeted with flowers and gifts. And they see the hate in our eyes. We try not to approach them because they are wicked. They are full of hate. They have been shelling residential areas. They have been looting. They have looted several supermarkets and farms. They also tend to stick together because they know we hate them. And we hate them. Is it your impression that those Russian troops thought they were going to be greeted with open arms and that they're surprised about people's reactions? They already knew. These are the defeated troops. They have come to pass on to rest and to eat. They are using the sound like a sort of sexist. But they approached in columns. They did not freely approach. And they had been firing at windows because they were afraid of people shooting at them from the windows and greeting them with monitor cocktails. They are being very careful. Can I just ask you one final question? Um, the invasion began one week ago. Do you sometimes find it hard to believe how much your city has changed in that time and the destruction that's been wrought upon it? My first reaction was absolute shock because look at where it's in the We have victims. People were killed. Now we have a situation where women are giving birth in the a Russian invader here is not letting a girl who is giving birth now to go to hospital in the city. Two babies have been born in this shelter. But people get used to everything. They are getting organized. They are now not worried about the shelling, thanks to the volunteer movement. People still drink coffee. They follow the news. They got organized very quickly and they didn't lose their self-control. They got united. For example, people organized to the students in student accommodation back to their home. There are people helping the medics, they're helping to move the wounded, but we are asking for help. We need a safe humanitarian corridor.
out of her sight. 